Hello, welcome to Revelator John. Um, so I'm looking ahead uh, to this weekend uh, football, uh, West Ham against Chelsea. We've got playing Chelsea at home. Uh, just looking through the uh, team, uh, potential team, the squad. Um, got a few injuries, that kind of thing. But it's not, this is not really a preview. I'm kind of looking at the players and thinking, well, would would any of these get into my top 10, 20, 30, 40 players of all time? And well, they wouldn't. But so I started thinking about my ultimate top 10. So I thought, I'll let you know what they are. See if you agree. I'm sure a lot of you will be uh, hurling abuse at the computer. Probably want to lynch me, you know, for some of the, my choices. But some of you might agree. Some of you might, you know, whatever. So if you're interested, you know, put your comments uh, at the bottom down there. Let us know who you think should be top 10. I know this is a purely individual thing, subjective choice. And I know it's a generational thing as well. It really depends. But I so, say, you know, I've been supporting West Ham over 40 years. Um... You know, been on this earth nearly 50 years, so I suppose a lot of my choices are, are to do with that. So, number 10. Number 10. At the back, played on the left, um, won two cups, you know, um, you know, a real man at the back, you know, um, sweet, you know, sweet player, you know, good passing, but, you know, a real character. But for me, Frank, uh, Frank Lampard Sr., Frank Lampard, as I would just call him, um, yeah, he's my number 10. Uh, I know he sort of fell out of favour with uh, some of the fans and, and the club in, in the past as well. Um, but he's still, for me, he's a top 10. Um, and just for the fact of, you know, winning two cups as well, you know, and being in those glory years for me, that sort of 70s and early 80s, well, you know, very early 80s, you know, that are just brilliant. Number nine, Frank McAvenny. Uh, the 85 86 season when we finished top three. 26 goals I think he got you know um, brilliant brilliant player you know I remember about 19 games into that season he was being you know interviewed on chat shows all the time as being the next goal scorer in Messiah he was being um, you know uh, being interviewed with uh, Dennis Law because he was Scottish and everything like that as being fantastic the world's you know best striker you know and then it kind of dipped off a little bit towards the end of the season but you know he was still fantastic got a solid best finish ever um, then he kind of, you know, soon left thereafter, and then he came back for a second stint. Didn't really work. He had his private issues and personal issues. I won't go into those, and you, you, you know, probably know all about those as well. But he's he's still great, you know. I I, I put him in my top ten, so he's number nine. Um, he would have been higher, but for all the other issues, that's why I said no. Um, number eight, number eight. I think number eight, and I, I put him in there because he was a general. He was a great pass of the ball, he was protected at back four, he, he was in a generation of players, for West Ham that is, that we didn't seem to have a lot, you know, we had a few, but not, not a fantastic squad, so I thought he just fitted perfectly in there, Scott Parker for me, great player, great professional, you know, grew up as a kid, you know, appeared on TV on a World Cup, uh, McDonald's advert, I think it was, or Burger King advert, you know, playing keepy up in, in his garden, got taken on by Charles and, and you know everybody was you know raving about this kid uh, growing up and he came to us and you know for me he proved it he proved what a great player he was you know he wasn't the kind of goal scorer goal scoring glory hunter but he was a real solid professional that's probably what we needed and I like those kind of players number seven for me Clyde Bass Clyde Bass late 60s early 70s first black player not first black player to play for uh, West Ham uh, or, or in the, even in the league, but you know, first black player to really make a really good impression, a big impression um, in, in the football league. You know, um, twice uh, top goal scorer or, or joint goal scorer, one once uh, top and the other one joint. Um, big, strong, powerful centre forward. You know, didn't let himself get bullied on the pitch, but a gentleman away from the pitch as well. But he got a lot of hassle in those days, as you can imagine, being black and all like that. Um, but for that, he's definitely my number seven. Um, and, you know, he was a toss-up there between you know, Billy Jennings and Alan Taylor, who was kind of mid-70s, won cups and all that kind of stuff, and top scorers as well. But, you know, I just went for Clyde Best because, you know, again, from my childhood, that's who I remember as well. I remember always... That, that guy sticking out. Uh, number six, number six. Because he's just just a great winger. I loved it. I, I loved him growing up. 
you know, 1980 Cup final, but even before then and after then as well. Alan Demacher, for me, was a fantastic player. Loved, loved him whipping those balls in. Loved, you know, skipping players, skinning players down the wing. Just loved it. Number five, this will be contentious for a lot of people because people will probably have this. These guys as one, two, three. I couldn't side between them, but, you know, they won the World Cup. It's more Peters and Hurst for me. Number five, they probably should be number one, two, three. I think the reason they were five for me is because they were just bef in their heyday, just before my my time. And although I've seen all the footage and everything like that, and they were around, you know, in you know when I was just born and my very early, I, I don't really have that connection with them. Let's say that I do with the other players, you know. So that's that's why I suppose. Uh, but you know, still legends of the, of the club. Number four. Oh, this is a problem of my youth and just he's absolute legend two two FA Cubs you know became a manager you know helped us out you know training fell out of favour with the club of course you know we, we know all, all that but Billy Bonds Billy Bonds will be you know when I grew up it was just like the man at the back Billy Bonds you know number three two goalkeepers okay couldn't decide between the two um, again from my early days I still think they're our best goalkeepers that we've ever had Debatable, I know, I know, um, but Merv Day, Mervyn Day, and Phil Parks. Um, Merv Day for the 75 Cup final, the um, Phil Parks in 1980 Cup final. Um, you know, Phil Parks took over from Merv Day after an injury, and you know, Merv never really saw uh, any time after that. Then it got, you know, sold on. Um, but I still think fantastic. And you know, those are the days of. You know, bare hand goalkeeping as well in the early days as well, especially with Merv Day. Um, you know, none of this, you know, massive pans, brotherly love type um, goalkeeper hands anymore. You know, these are, you know, these were men, and they got bullied as well. You know, that you know there wasn't a lot of protection for goalies in those days, so they got slapped about a bit as well. You know, so um, you know, those are those two. I couldn't really decide between the two. In all fairs. Okay, so number two, number two is. This is going to be contentious for a lot of people. Trevor Brooking, Sir Trev, got to be in there. He's got to be in number 10. Where in that number 10, who knows? But for me, coming at number two, and he's the, he's, he's the one player um, that got me support in West Ham as a kid. So, a bit of background. When I was a kid, all, where I grew up, um, all the kids, uh, all the people I know, family, friends, you know, all supported Man United or Liverpool. Um, uh, if you supported, you know, Midlands teams like Villa and stuff like that. And I knew it was different. I knew I didn't want to support any of those teams. And because of Ron Greenwood connection, because of, you know, the cup successes, because of John Lyle, because of, you know, Trevor Brooking playing for England as well under Greenwood, um, because uh, they always seem to be on Match of the Day or um, other TV programs, um, TV football programs like Star Soccer, you know, maybe some of you might remember some of that, um, but they always seem to be on there. And, um, you know, it was just the way they played football, the way they tried to play football, and it was just, it was just brilliant, really. So that's why, you know, it was that that really got me supporting West Ham as a, as a re real youngster, you know, we're talking four or five. And when we were watching football with my dad, you know, um, you know, he was... Um, uh, he always liked uh, Forrest um, in those in the sort of seventies, and you know he was always nodding his head every time he used to. We used to watch West Ham, and I was just like, "Yeah, yeah, this is the team for me." So Trevor, per, Sir Trevor, uh, you are the reason why I support West Ham. So there you go. Um, and number one, number one, probably my favourite player of all time. Well, he's not pretty because he is my number one. Not only for what he did for us and the goals he scored, but more for his his leadership and his fight, his his character and his fight. And I love this kind of player. I love a player who wants to give it all, get stuck in. You know, he's a he's a bit of a he's a bit of a boy, and he and he's uh, got himself in trouble every now and again. I know that, but. And I suppose because he's Italian as well, and I think he brings that kind of Italian temperament as well. well. I think we just we needed that kind of player at that time. Possibly we still do need that kind of player. But Paolo Paolo Di Canio for me, and he still for me has scored the best ever goal. Period. Not in a West Ham shirt, 
but period. Any goal is still the best goal ever. Um, I don't know if any of you agree with me with that, but you know, for me, he's fantastic. And also, that kind of goal in that period, you know, was just fantastic. So those are my top ten. Uh, I doubt you'll agree. Uh, I'm sure there's some other players that are this. And I said this is really covering a bit from my early childhood, a bit from very early childhood, which I didn't really know about football at the time. I was too young. I was, I was only a baby, really. But then going all the way through my early childhood and then in, in, uh, into later years as well, not many, I could say, that would be in there, certainly at, uh, over the last sort of 15, 20 years, i got to say. Most of them are going to be before then, you know. A few, few have come close. Don't get me wrong, a few have come close. I think we've had some heroic performances. I think we've had some solid professionals over the years. But we've had some we've had some poor, poor players over the years as well. Anyway, see what you think. Uh let me know down there in the comments uh, if you uh, agree with me, if you want to shoot me, you know, whatever. But uh enjoy. Cheers.